Right, I have SQA, model paper one, calculator paper, questions three up to nine, a little bit of a problem with the phone now, the video, so I've stopped after number two, but I'm just going to carry on. So question three is a vector question, it has a cube, cuboid, uh, we have the origin, zero, 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 we also have point R, which is zero, two, zero. 0 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and 0 in the z direction. Now m is the midpoint of 0 and r. So if we know r is 0, 2, 0, and the origin is 0, 0, 0, then the only direction in which there is movement is the y direction here. So we're going from 0 to 2, m's in the middle, so that'd be 0, 1, 0, because 1's in the middle, 0, and 2. We also have point N, which is between U and Q. So the value of Q is 420, value of U is 423. It does tell us in the question that UN is a third of UQ. So if we travel from U to N, that's the same as traveling a third of the distance from U to Q. Well, how would I get from U to Q? I would not travel all in the x direction or the y direction and I would go 3 down from 3 down to 0 so that's a drop of 3 in the z direction so u to n is a third of that distance so it'll just be a drop of 1 in the z direction so the x and y directions would stay the same and would drop down 1 in the z direction so n would be 4, 2, 2 Question 4 is a straight line question. We are given the coordinates 2, 5 and negative 1, negative 4. And we are asked to find the equation of the line. So I substitute in my values. So point 2,5 will give... And negative 1, negative 4 will give y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Substitute in... 9 over 3, which is 3. Then we need to use the equation y minus b equals mx minus a. So I have the point 2, 5. I could also use negative 1, negative 4. I'd still get the same answer out at the end of the question. But these two points are positive, less likely to make a mistake. So y minus b equals mx minus a. a B is 5, A is 2, M is 3, substitute in, multiply out the bracket, 3 times X, 3 times minus 2, add 5 to both sides, Y equals 3X minus 1. Those questions are the same every single time. Once you learn how to do it, 3 marks in the bag. Question 5 is an arc of a circle question. So we are given an angle of 42 degrees, we're given a radius of 1.2, but we need the diameter because the arc is part of the circumference, so we need to double the radius to get the diameter. Then the arc is given by the fraction of the circle multiplied by the circumference. So in this case, 42 over 360 multiplied by pi d. So the, the x over 360 formula isn't a magic formula that appears out of nowhere. All we're doing is saying, right, what fraction of the circle do we have? We have 42 degrees out of 360 degrees. So use the calculator, press the buttons, 0 0.88 meters. And the context of the question is relating it to a staircase. It says the arc BC must be at least 0 0.9 meters. Well, it isn't. So no, it will not past regulations as 0 0.88 is less than 0 0.9. Alright, question number 6. In question number 6 we basically have a large cone with a small cone chopped off of the top. And that leaves a shape which looks a bit like a lampshade, but it's a glass ornament apparently. And we just need to find the volume of that. So the volume of the ornament would be the volume of the large cone, subtract the volume of the small cone. 
So we'll find out the volume of the large cone. So having a look at the diagram in the question, well the volume of a cone, sorry, is a third pi r squared h. We need radius and height. The diameter is 30, so the radius will be 15. The height is 24. We also need the volume of the small cone. Now the radius of the small cone will be 5 as the diameter is 10. The height will be 8 because the height of the ornament is 16, the height of the large cone is 24. Subtract those, we get the height of the small cone, which is 8. So we've set up here the volume of the ornament is the volume of the large cone minus the volume of the small cone. So there's a large cone, there's a small cone, so the volume of the ornament is this, subtract this. I should probably have put that in the line of working, but I've forgotten to do it. That comes out as 5445.427. Question says, give your answer correct as two significant figures, which is why I've underlined the four here. Second significant figure is the four in the hundreds column, so it's basically saying round to the nearest 100. 5,400 centimetres cubed. Question 7 is a reverse percentage question. It gives the price of a holiday plus a booking fee. So we have the cost of the holiday, which I'm going to call 100%, plus the fee, which is a 4% booking fee. So that will be the total cost of 104%. So that 104% comes to £894.40. I want to work out 100%, which would be the cost of the holiday on its own, not including the booking fee. So if I know what 104% is, divide both sides by 104 to get 1%, multiply both sides by 100 to get 100%, which is the original cost. So again, the cost, the 100%, the £860, add 4% of the £860, gives the total cost. So we've got the cost of the holiday plus the booking fee. The cost of the holiday would have been £860. Question number eight. Question number eight has a beam of 8 metres, which is resting on the wall at an angle of 59 degrees. It's also tied down by a tie here at an angle of 22 degrees. It asks us to find the length of this side. It's got some angles, once a length, we've got another length. It's going to be the sine rule or the cosine rule. So using our primary math skills, 180 degrees in a straight line, we can work out this angle here which turns out to be 121. So we have an angle here, 22. This angle here, 121. We want the side opposite the 121. We have the side opposite the 8. Two angles and two sides. That is a cosine rule question. So we'll write down the cosine rule. Substitute in the information that we have. In this case, we don't know angle B. We don't know side B, we don't want side B, so I've just omitted that here. We always get rid of one of them. Uh, and multiply both sides by the sin of 121, or if you like to cross multiply, it's just the same thing. So little a will be 8 times sin 121 over sin 22. Just evaluate that on the calculator, 18.3 metres. Question number nine is a skill factor, in an area skill factor question based on the context of jewellery. So to find an area skill factor, we we'll first find a linear skill factor. The large piece is four centimetres, the smaller piece is 0 0.8 centimetres. So find the enlargement skill factor, four divided by 0 0.8 is five. So the large piece is five times the small piece. Well, the area scale factor will be the square of that because it's five times as wide and also five times as high. So 
So for an area scale factor we square, so 5 squared is 25. So the larger piece will have an area 25 times that of the smaller piece. So the area of the smaller piece is 0 0.6 multiplied by 25 is 15 centimetres squared. And that is questions 3 up to 9.